Hi guys, we're going to talk a little bit about technical drawing today. I'm just going to pull up a slideshow I'm working on over here. Um, I'll share the slideshow with you towards the end of the presentation. We're going to start talking about technical drawing. We're just going to do a short introduction, some of the tools you may use, some of the skills you need. The first tool you need to get is a clutch pencil. Drawing with a normal pencil doesn't quite give you the sort of line you need. We usually divide our clutch pencils into two different millimeters. A 0.5 mil, an HB pencil, is usually for our outlines and our hidden details within our drawings. We'll get more into that later, don't worry about that for the moment. Our construction lines, however, are drawn using a 2H. These are our light lines that are drawn as the beginnings of our drawing, as a thinking step. We'll leave these lines, we're not going to raise them, but you draw them so light that you can't actually pick them up. Chances are when the image is scanned using a normal scanner, the construction lines will be so light that you don't pick them up at all. Those lines will be drawn also the clutch pencil, but using a 0.3 millimeters, much smaller than the 0.5, and using a 2H lead. You can see here the picture you've got is a 0.9. You want to make sure you have a 0.5 and a 0.3. Look, you can get along with a 0.5 and then switching between the two different leads. You must ensure that you use a clutch pencil. A normal pencil is not sharp enough to be able to draw the lines we need for technical drawing. Next, you need a good set of set squares. These things break all the time. They're generally made out of cheap perspex. If you can find the flexible ones, it's great. But you're going to need a 45 degree. You can see that one over here. It is half a square. Both have 90 degrees on either side. But this set square over here draws 45 degrees lines. This will be what we use for our oblique drawing. This set square over here, a 30, 60 degree set square, we're going to use for our isometric drawings. A ruler will generally need those just to measure the length of different lines, although most set squares have on each side a ruler. Apart from set squares, you need a good compass. On the right hand side here, I've got generally one of those cheap school compasses to come with a mass set. They're okay, but if you're going to be doing a lot of technical drawing, you want to get a reasonable compass with a proper lead that you can really get it sharp. Also, the ones on the right here, these school compasses, tend to move around when you're drawing your circles, whereas the ones on the left-hand side are a little bit more sturdy. You can get a little deeper into the paper, and they generally draw a sharper line. Remember to keep a compass sharp all the time. The best way is just to keep a nail file around to sharpen the one side when you need it. Once you've got the equipment, you need to focus on the different types of lines you'll be drawing. Lines like the language you speak when you're talking in a language, you need to know the language of lines three different types here. The first one outlines, these are dark solid lines, they are the final lines we'll be putting down on our drawing. We never want to commit to an outline unless we've actually finished our drawing and we know that the lines are going to be there permanently. We darken them using a 0.5 HB lead. Our hidden detail, these are lines that don't really exist in real life but they show hidden parts or hidden diameters or things that are inside our drawing that we need to see if we're engineers and we're actually going to build the part. Construction lines, as I said, these are our thin 0.3 H2 lines. These are our thinking lines. We'll draw these all over the place, but they'll be very light, and probably by the time the, the, the image is scanned, they'll, they'll sort of fall away. Our hidden details are always dotted. Our construction lines are solid, as are our outlines, which are dark. When we talk about technical drawing, we generally break it down to three, three main skills. Isometric and oblique. Both are representing figures of parts in 3D, whereas our first and third degree angles, our third degree, first and third angle of graphics show our parts in three different views. I've put to get a short summary table so you can see what the different ones look like in terms of their comparison. Our isometric is accurate, two scale, drawn one to one, and always using a 30 degrees. When drawing isometric, you should always only be drawing 30 or 90 degrees. Those are no, there should be no other angles you were using when drawing isometric. Whereas oblique, it's our quick, disproportionate, not to scale, a quick way of drawing a 3D view of our object so we can see it quickly. Not something that we'd use to build the part from, just something we'd like to see what the part looks like before we actually build it. We use a 45 degree set square there. Lastly, our first angle orthographic or third angle orthographic projections, you can see we have a train set there. It's shown as the front, the left, and the top view. You'll notice there's a 45 degree line in there as well. We'll talk more about that when we get to first and third angle. But generally, first and third angle, if we can show three sides of an individual object, we can usually build that object. It's standardized, it has a set format, and you have to follow that format when drawing first or third angle with a graphic projection. So that's a general summary of most of the drawing skills you need for technical drawing. 
in the next part, we'll talk about also isometric drawing. We'll break it into the different pieces and talk, talk about how to actually draw an isometric drawing. See you soon.